advance of the European elections in May 2019, FPA launched its manifesto, sharing its vision to build a healthier future for Europe. This vision explores what a research-based industry can contribute, together with concrete proposals for consideration by policymakers across the EU. Nick Thatcher went to Brussels to find out more. Illness never sleeps. It grows, mutates, and causes pain and suffering. This is the campaign from FPA focusing on the passion, commitment and dedication of individuals, teams and companies in the pharmaceutical industry, who've all pledged the different reasons why they won't rest until the world's a healthier place. So this is your pledge wall? Yes, it is. It's one of our many pledge walls. And building on that pledge is a new health manifesto for all prospective MEPs and European policymakers to consider ahead of the 2019 Euro elections. So here the We Want Rest is really about people and why they work in our industry and what they're trying to obtain. And our manifesto is a bridge between our commitments as an industry to find solutions, therapies, cures for the many diseases that are out there and the patients that are waiting for these cures, and a call for action to European institutions on what they need to do in order to support our industry to be able to deliver those solutions for patients. The manifesto has three strategic visions for what Europe can do. The first is health for all, bringing innovative health solutions to all patients and driving the evolution towards patient-centred and outcome-focused healthcare systems. The second is European excellence, making the EU a world leader in medical research and development. And the third is stronger together, joining forces through collaboration and public-private partnerships to fast-track results. We would hope that the EU institutions continue to give health the priority that it requires and we would also expect the EU institutions to ensure that the legislative framework that we have is predictable and stable enough in order to continue to attract investments into Europe um, and make sure that we can move those 7,000 products that are in development and turn them into actually products and therapies for patients on the market. And this means also maintaining the incentives framework that we have in Europe. And finally, we would hope to see the next Commission and the next Parliament move away from the siloed mentality and approach towards health, so that this health in all policies is not so much a buzzword as a policy-making rule. And with 70% of European citizens wanting more to be done at an EU level on healthcare, pooling resources and expertise will ensure tangible benefits for all who live here. We policymakers need to keep healthcare high on the public agenda in the EU. We need to promote policies to ensure the right care and the resources. We need to fight inconsistencies and disparities across Europe in care delivery. I believe that we need robust EU financing instruments to support, improve and strengthen our health systems and health in general in the EU. Diminishing of health budgets undoubtedly will be in the detriment of member state citizens who already overwhelmingly support the notion of the EU intervening further in health. And other organisations representing patients across Europe share similar hopes and aspirations. We're seeing so many innovations in cancer care. We're seeing innovations in medicines and treatment such as immuno-oncology therapy, radiology in surgery and in digital health. And that European institutions can support this in many ways. They can support EU cooperation in health technology assessment so we can have faster access to treatments. They can also invest in research so we can look at translational research and translational medicine. And they can also invest in the infrastructure for digital health to bring all these together for better outcomes. Within the Commission we need to have a home, a safe space for health policy and in fact over the last few months EPF has been working with other civil society health organisations to advocate for a vice president on health. When it comes to the European Parliament we need to have a strong network of very committed MEPs across different committees from different parties really speaking out on health, being strong ambassadors and also listening to the voice of patients. A strong economy and a cohesive society relies on a healthy population and FPA believes this manifesto provides a roadmap for how to build a healthier future and a brighter tomorrow for Europe.